Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Over the Horizon Radar. This presentation provides a brief technical introduction to Over the Horizon, or OTH radar, and explains how OTH radars achieve much greater detection ranges compared to traditional line-of-sight radars. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of ionospheric or sky wave propagation at HF. If you're not familiar with this topic, or if you'd like a brief review, you might want to watch the presentation Understanding HF Propagation before beginning this presentation. Let's start by reviewing traditional line-of-sight radar. These are radars which operate at so-called microwave frequencies, that is, roughly in the range of about 400 MHz to about 60 GHz. In the vast majority of cases, Radar is used to scan for and or track objects that are moving, either through the air or on bodies of water. Examples of these types of objects are both fixed and rotary wing aircraft, various types of missiles, ships, etc. Although performance varies widely among radars, most ground-based radars can detect high-flying aircraft at distances up to several hundred kilometers. And ship-to-ship -ship radars have detection ranges on the order of tens of kilometers. These ranges can sometimes be extended by elevating the radar, either by placing it on a mast or tower, or by installing it on an aircraft. The range of a line-of-sight radar is limited by both terrain features, such as mountains, and by the curvature of the Earth. For example, this radar could detect both ships and planes, which lie above the optical horizon, but it could not detect targets which lie below or beyond this horizon. In military and defense applications, the ability to detect targets at greater distances is often desirable. A well-known example of this is detecting the launch of an intercontinental ballistic missile. More recently, the detection of low-flying cruise missiles and fast-moving hypersonic missiles has also increased in importance. It's worth noting that most stealth or low observability technology is normally intended to defeat line-of-sight radars, which illuminate targets from specific angles using relatively short wavelengths. And lastly, there are also non-military applications for beyond line-of-sight radar, primarily for seaborne targets such as detecting smugglers, illegal fishing operations, etc. Radars which can see beyond the optical line of sight are called over-the-horizon or OTH radars. You may also sometimes hear these radars referred to as backscatter radars. OTH radar development began in the 1950s and 1960s, and they are still being operated and developed today. The ability of OTH radars to see beyond the optical horizon comes from their use of HF frequencies that is, frequencies in the range of about 3 to 30 megahertz. A typical OTH radar using HF has a range of low thousands of kilometers, which is an order of magnitude greater than most line-of-sight radars. This greater range in turn increases the coverage area by roughly two orders of magnitude. However, greater detection range also means lower target location accuracy, or range resolution. In some cases, the maximum location accuracy is on the order of tens of kilometers. This means that OTH radar is only useful for detection, not targeting. It should also be noted that OTH radar performance may strongly depend on ionospheric conditions. We'll discuss this in more detail later in this presentation. OTH radars can be generally divided into skywave radars, and surface wave radars. Both use HF frequencies, but have somewhat different characteristics due to their different propagation modes. Let's look at each of these, starting with Skywave. Skywave propagation uses the ionosphere, which is a set of layers of charged particles that surround the Earth at an altitude of about 100 to 300 kilometers. Depending on its state of ionization, the ionosphere can refract or bend HF signals downwards, and therefore signals which encounter the ionosphere at an appropriate angle 
can travel well beyond the line of sight. Although skywave propagation is most often associated with long-distance communications, it can also be used for over-the-horizon radar. One important thing to keep in mind is that the ionosphere is constantly changing, with different mechanisms causing short, medium, and long-term variability. Compensating for or adapting to this variability is necessary for efficient use of SkyWave. The other type of propagation used in OTH radars is surface wave, in which signals bend around the curvature of the Earth. This kind of propagation is also called ground wave, but in OTH radars, the ground is usually a large body of water. Compared to sky wave, surface wave requires use of lower frequencies and has lower maximum distances. But surface wave is also relatively unaffected by changes or variation in the ionosphere. The nature of surface wave propagation means that these types of OTH radars are most often used to monitor ships or natural ocean events, such as tsunami or icebergs. But surface wave can also be used for the detection of low-flying aircraft and or missiles as well. Next, we'll look at some important aspects or considerations for OTH radar. These are antennas, frequency selection, sounding or sensing, noise, clutter, and Doppler processing. We'll begin by looking at antennas. Very large antennas are one of the distinguishing features of over-the-horizon radars. One reason is that OTH antennas must support operation over most or all of HF, and antenna size is generally inversely proportional to frequency. In addition, these antennas must also have high gain and be able to handle very high transmit powers. A typical OTH system will have powers in the range of hundreds of kilowatts to megawatts. That said, there are many different form factors and sighting arrangements used for over-the-horizon radar antennas. Another important consideration for SkyWave radars is the takeoff angle or elevation should be adjustable to adapt to changing ionospheric conditions. In the case of vertically polarized antenna arrays, a ground screen is often placed in front of the antennas to minimize the takeoff angle. All of these factors mean that OTH radar installations are usually quite large and generally are not movable or relocatable making them relatively easy to identify and or target. The antennas for line-of-sight radars are usually monostatic. That is, the transmit and receive antennas are either the same or are closely co-located. However, most OTH antenna systems are bi-static, meaning that the transmit and receive antennas are in different locations. Typical distances between these antennas are in the high tens of kilometers. The reason for using this bi-static arrangement is that it helps to keep the receiver from being overloaded by the very high transmit powers used in OTH radars. Physical antenna separation reduces the direct wave power between the transmitter and receiver. Note that because the distance between these antennas is relatively short, compared to other types of bi-static radar installations, physically separated OTH radar antennas are still sometimes referred to as quasi-monostatic. Our next topic is frequency selection. Recall that OTH radars typically operate over most of the HF frequency range. This is necessary to adapt to both fast short-term and slower long-term changes in ionospheric propagation. Therefore, both the frequency of operation and the takeoff angle must be chosen to match several criteria. The first and most obvious is that the signal must be able to propagate to the surveilled area and back. The frequency should also be chosen to minimize noise and any man-made interference. We'll come back to this point again shortly. And in some cases, the frequency must be chosen to match the type of targets to be surveilled. For example, longer wavelengths are better for detecting stealth or low observability targets. In addition, because HF is crowded and has very limited bandwidth, frequencies could also be chosen 
in order to avoid causing interference to other users of the HF spectrum. However, it's worth pointing out that from a historical point of view, this has rarely been a concern of over-the-horizon radar operators. And for many HF spectrum users, OTH radar is perhaps best known as a source of randomly appearing high power interference. Interference and noise are two of the reasons why effective over-the-horizon radar operation requires real-time monitoring. This monitoring is usually performed at the radar site and uses a combination of sounding and sensing to select the optimal frequency of operation. Sounding involves measuring ionospheric conditions and propagation by means of active testing. Signals are transmitted either from the radar itself, a sounder, or both, and the received signals are analyzed. This sounding can be done by sweeping in frequency and also by sweeping in antenna elevation or takeoff angle. Note that modeling or prediction of ionospheric conditions can also be helpful, but actual measurements tend to produce better results. The other aspect is sensing, the goal of which is determining if certain frequencies or frequency ranges are occupied by other signals. It can also be used to measure noise levels since these also vary by frequency. Sensing is a purely passive monitoring of received signals and can also be used to avoid causing and or receiving interference. Let's look at the issue of noise more closely. The long distances and wide beam widths used in over-the-horizon radar mean that target returns are often very low power, and hence a high signal-to-noise ratio is advantageous. Generally speaking, signal-to-noise ratio can be improved by using higher output power, since this should translate into higher power returns. SNR can also be improved by minimizing the amount of received noise. As previously mentioned, the typical output power of over-the-horizon radars is already on the order of hundreds of kilowatts to megawatts, so noise reduction, rather than further increasing output power, is the most common method used to improve SNR. In traditional line-of-sight radars, most of the noise present in the signal is generated internally within the radar receiver itself. But in most over-the-horizon radars, the majority of noise comes from external sources, such as man-made noise, lightning, cosmic noise, etc. Another factor limiting the ability to see radar returns is something called clutter. Clutter is unwanted or uninteresting returns, most often from the ground or bodies of water, but in some cases clutter can even be caused by atmospheric or ionospheric phenomena. High levels of clutter can make it difficult or impossible to detect targets, because the clutter returns are often much larger than the actual target returns. For example, echoes from the surrounding ground can be 30 to 90 dB higher than those from an aircraft. As discussed on the previous slide, OTH radar returns often have relatively low signal-to-noise ratios, and thus clutter removal becomes even more critical. The primary way in which clutter is removed is by means of something called Doppler processing, or just Doppler. Recall that the primary purpose of radar is to detect or track moving targets. Doppler processing is advantageous in that it can differentiate between moving targets and non-moving objects, such as the ground or the sea. As you should already know, the Doppler effect describes the fact that signals reflected from moving objects will be shifted in frequency. For example, a radar signal illuminating an incoming target will produce a return that is shifted upwards in frequency. Note, however, that for detecting aircraft or missiles, overcoming noise or poor SNR is often a bigger challenge than Doppler. This is because flying targets are small and produce very weak returns but they are also moving at very high speeds, which produces significant and easily detectable Doppler shift. On the other hand, Doppler processing is problematic for ships in rough sea, since the motion of the water is essentially moving clutter, which may have a velocity similar to that of the ship itself. In these cases, longer processing intervals 
can be used to improve detection. Let's end with a brief summary. Over the horizon, or OTH radar, uses HF frequencies to detect targets beyond the optical horizon, at ranges that are often more than an order of magnitude greater than those achievable with traditional line-of-sight radars. OTH radars are primarily used in military and defense applications, such as early warning of missile launches, but they are also used in some civilian applications. OTH radar can be based on either skywave propagation or surface wave propagation. Skywave takes advantage of ionospheric refraction to extend detection range, but is also affected by short and longer term variation in the ionosphere. Surface wave has a much shorter maximum range than skywave, but is also largely unaffected by ionospheric variation. Over the horizon radars adapt to ionospheric changes by changing their operating frequency, and this frequency agility is also useful in avoiding interference and some types of noise. Real-time monitoring, in the form of both sounding and sensing, is therefore a key element of over-the-horizon radars. And finally, although clutter removal is not unique to over-the-horizon radars, it is particularly important due to the relatively low signal-to-noise ratio of target returns. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Over-the-Horizon Radar. If you'd like to learn more about radar, HF applications, or test and communication solutions from Rody and Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.